man. If only you guys could see what I'm seeing on the other side of the camera right now, and you will in a second, but uh, this is almost emotional for me in a way. Today we are unveiling the Rebel 1100 version 2.0. Super excited to show it to you guys. It's almost emotional because if you've been watching the channel, you know that this used to be like my number one bike. This is what blew the channel up. It's the bike that I fell in love with, the bike that means the most to me, but I've been without it for quite some time. Over winter, obviously I couldn't ride it because here in Maryland, it was freezing and snowing and whatever. And then right at the start of riding season, I found the infamous Rebel 1100 oil leak, which put it out of commission for a few months due to whatever, you guys remember the story. But she's finally back and in her prime and I've done a lot of mods to her that I've had stacking up over the winter in the past few months. Sorry, I'm not looking at you guys. I'm just like staring at her. It's such a such a crazy moment. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I hope you guys are as stoked as I am on the Rebel 1100 version 2.0. Oh, say hello. Okay, after myself and all of my cameras melted down in the summer heat, we have moved to the shade, but here she is. Leave some comments below and let me know what you guys think of her. I am so stoked with how she turned out. As you can see, she still has her same like look that she had before, but just really amped up and almost more of like a touring feel to her. I wanna call it club style performance sport tourer. Let me know what you guys think about that and also say that five times fast. Club style performance sport tourer, club style performance sport tour. I, this took like seven takes, so how I just did that three times in a row is beyond me. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what I was going for. I didn't want to lose any of the sleek lines or any of like the performance cruiser vibes to it by bulking it up with too much stuff. But I was really inspired when I got to ride the Rebel 1100T and got to experience the saddlebags and their functionality and everything like that. And it made me want to kind of turn my bike into more touring oriented, just adding way more function to it while also making it look a lot better and not taking away from just the beast that it is already, you know? So we didn't take any of the old parts off, but we did add quite a bit of stuff. And you guys know that typically I'll do like an individual install and review video for each part, but it's so time consuming. And I've been without this bike for so long that I knew that if I made an individual video for each of them, that I wouldn't be riding this thing until freaking fall. So I took two days and I just hunkered down, put everything on at once. And today we're gonna go over that for you. Now, the question is, do we start at the back and work our way to the front or do we start at the front and work our way to the back? I have a feeling that lots of you guys are going to want to know about those saddlebags because it's one of the most obvious changes. So with that said, I'm going to make you wait. <laughs> we'll start at the front and work our way to the back and go over all of the new parts that I put on her. Okay, so first thing that's probably going to jump out at you guys about the front end is these hand guards, and I have been loving them. It's probably a good time to mention also that I finished installing everything two days ago, and then yesterday I got out on the bike and did about 130 plus miles with a total of about like six hours of seat time to really test everything out so I can kind of speak from experience. But yeah, these hand guards, I am loving them. These are Memphis Shades hand guards, and you might be saying, what? I've never seen these for a Rebel 1100 before, and that's because you haven't. They just came out. I'm the first person with them. Check out the link in the description. And actually, links for all of this will be in the description, so check that out if you're interested in any of it. But yeah, the hand guards are brand new. I'm the first person with them, and I have been absolutely loving them, and they have benefits that I didn't even realize they could have, honestly. So if you saw the video back in March when Honda sent me to Bike Week to ride the new Rebel 1100T touring model, you might remember that when I 
rode it, I said that I loved that fairing, but I kind of wished that I had something where it was just the fairing that I had and hand guards. So it is nice that it covers the hands. I gotta be honest though, in hot, hot weather like this, it would be nice to have breeze on your hands. So I would almost prefer a fairing like uh, the one that I have, and then maybe some hand guards so you can choose when you wanna have the hand guards on. Well, Memphis Shade answered all of our prayers and came out with some. Uh, the benefits that I said that I didn't realize that I would get from them is how much airflow they block or how much wind they block. And I noticed that because I was riding and I'm like, man, has it just been that long since I rode with a fairing or is it, am I really that relaxed? It's blocking so much wind. And then I was doing like 75 and a biker did like the biker wave and I'm like, what's up? And I went to put my hand back on the bar and it was so easy to put my hand back on the grip. And I was like, why is that? And then I kind of started feeling and I'm like, wait a second, this blocks a lot more air than I thought. So you can see there that it comes up a decent amount and goes around the grip. But what you don't realize is that it also shoots the air kind of up and down. So when your hand's on the grip, it's like the air is going all over and under your arm. So it's just like, I don't know, your arm's like in a wind tunnel and you don't have to hold on as tight. They're freaking great. Install is super easy also. It's just very similar to all the other Memphis Shades products. You have that rubber grommet that you gotta put in the hole of the hand guard and then put the little screw thing through, tighten it down, and then they just attach at the mirror hole. Now, obviously I also took off my stock mirrors. So we'll talk about that in a second, but essentially you just use the mirrors to hold the hand guards in place. However, I got these little block off plates for the stock mirrors and they actually have Allen key uh, tops so you can tighten it down and they are nice and secure, not going anywhere. And I love how like sleek that is holding it down. It looks like it was meant to be. They're the same like, I forget what it's called, but super durable, super hard material there. And not only do they block some of the airflow and kind of take the stress off of your arms, but they also keep the bugs from exploding all over your hands and rocks from hitting your hands and all that kind of good stuff. And then we'll talk about the mirrors. Like I was saying, I took the stock mirrors off. It's not that I wasn't a fan of how they looked. I just figured I would try the bar end mirrors. And I feel like bar end mirrors are more of like a naked bike cafe racer type thing and look a little funny on cruisers sometimes, but they do look way better than I was expecting. And honestly, I can see a lot more out of them also. What's up guys? So even though they're a lot smaller than the stock mirrors, which you can really tell when you come around to the front, you don't have those giant freaking like lollipops sticking up from the fairing. But even though they're so much smaller, you can see a whole lot. Lots of people complain because their shoulders get in the way of the stock mirrors and they can't see behind them too well. I don't have that problem because I'm a slender boy. But with that said, literally I can't see my shoulder in these mirrors at all. You can see behind yourself way more and it kind of turns the rear view mirrors more into true rear view mirrors, not side view mirrors. And install on these was super simple. The mirrors attach to these little bar ends that come with them. And then it comes with a longer bolt that you put through and the stock bar ends are threaded. So you don't have to do anything other than thread that bolt into the old threads. You do have to get some uh, spacers in there or you can use washers, but I thought the spacer would be a cleaner look. And that's just to get this to sit out far enough that your grip isn't catching on that when you're using your throttle. And and uh, those spacers will be in the description as well. Super cheap from Amazon and I got them on both sides because I think it looks just way better than stacking washers in there. And then next thing, which was a huge game changer as well for something so small. Oh, that's terrible. Let me go on the other side. We got some bar risers in there and they're only one inch risers, but it makes so much of a difference. They're just one inch straight up. Some people have the one inch up and one inch back, but I don't need or want the bars any closer to me. I just wanted them a little bit higher. And these did the trick perfect. You don't have to reroute any of the cables. You don't gotta add extensions to anything. You can go up to like four inch risers, I think, and not have to add any extensions, but you do have to do a considerable amount of rerouting. And I didn't find the stock bar position to be uncomfortable. I just wanted it a little bit higher so I wasn't quite as hunched over. So all the rerouting and all that nonsense wasn't worth it to me. Install is super simple. All you gotta do is take off this thing and then it'll show the bolts for the dash and you take that off off to kind of get it out of the way. Take the stock top bolts off, add the riser underneath the bars, and then use the new longer bolts and tighten everything down. Although you don't need to do any extensions or anything, I did have to take the stock brake line. This thing used to be in a bracket and I had to take it out because it was a little bit of a stretch. And then I just took the whole bracket off because the bracket was just to hold that on and hold the turn signals on. And with the turn signals down there, the bracket became useless. So I took it off and everything fits real nice, super simple. And you can see 
when you're looking at it, you know, you can't really tell at first that there's risers, but then you look at it like this and you can definitely tell the bars are over the tank, all that kind of good stuff. Seating position is improved, but uh, you don't kind of lose any of the steering feel. I feel like lots of the times you hear people say that they put tall risers on and then the steering isn't quite as crisp feeling. And I wanted to keep kind of the performance of it and how well it handles. Like I said, I was on the bike for like six or seven hours yesterday. And normally I'll get kind of a little bit of pain in between my shoulder blades from being hunched over too much. And that's totally gone with these. So definitely, definitely worth it. I don't know why I waited to do that. And the next thing you're probably going to notice down here on the front is the new radiator cover looking so good. This is one of the slash cut ones from Burley brand, obviously, as you can see there. And the idea behind this at first, I wasn't going to do it honestly, but then I figured if you're going on a longer trip, you want as much protection here as possible because a rock to the radiator can really ruin a good trip. The stock one is plastic in the middle and it's slats that are like a half inch to an inch apart and did not look like it was protecting anything. So this should do a much better job. As you can see, it's like tight mesh in there. So, you know, nothing substantial is getting through there. And plus it looks really freaking good. Install is easy. You literally take off the old one with one, two, three, four bolts right there and then reuse the stock bolts to put the new one on easy as pie. And then while we're down here, I threw on the Burley brand sliders as well. They look awesome. At first I wasn't going to get these either because I'm like, oh, how much crash protection do they really offer? But then I'm thinking, you know what? Why don't I just not crash? Besides all of the like big crash bars just look big and doofy and ugly and take away from like the clean lines of the bike. I love how clean and simple these are. They don't stick out super far, but you can see they stick out far enough that it's going to save the whole like uh, bracket right there. Going to save the engine case and then same thing over here. And as an added bonus on my trip yesterday, I tested it out because I knew that lots of y'all would ask. And yes, you can super easily and super comfortably throw your foot up on it for like makeshift highway pegs. You could probably even throw some skateboard grip tape around that or like a rubber or something or another around it so that your foot doesn't slide off as easily. But I was riding both with my foot up like that and also like resting my ankle like that. And uh, both ways, it was super comfortable. Obviously, this way brings your leg up a little bit, but it still helps you stretch out in ways that you couldn't before. So super, super stoked on these. And then another reason why I got these and a reason why I said it's Rebel 1100 version 2.0, because there will be a 2.1 at some point in the future. Part of the plan is I'm going to use this part right here to mount some bright yellow fog lights on. I love this bike and I love the headlight, but it really is lacking at night because it's such like a sharp cutoff line that when you're going around a turn, all the light light hits where you're not looking. So it really needs some sort of like bright fog lights to light things up at night. And I figured that these would also double great as a little mounting point for some fog lights there. So stay tuned. I definitely plan on doing some fog lights in the future. Oh, and I'm realizing I didn't talk about the install of these. It was actually super simple and I did it within 15 minutes thanks to Gus from On The Rebel 11. Shout out to him for the video that he did showing how he installed his other crash bars. It helped out a ton. Essentially how it works is the bolt for these is the bolt that holds the engine up. So you have to find a way to support the engine a little bit to make it slide through easier or else it's gonna be a pain in the ass. And Gus showed that he used an air shim because the issue with these is there's no frame that goes under the motor or anything. It's just, you know, oil pan and you don't wanna crack it. So essentially all I did was I put the bike in a wheel chock. I put the jack underneath it like an inch or two away from the oil pan, just close enough that the air shim could fill the space in between them. But to the point that if the bike slipped off, it wouldn't be able to drop down and hit the jack, if that makes sense. Pumped up the air shim, jacked up the jack, slightly and then it made it to where the engine was lifted up enough that the stock bar slid out uh, pretty easily and I actually just lined this bar up with the stock one and used this and a rubber mallet to kind of hit the stock one out so that this one just followed into its home if that makes sense and you just torque it down to 32 foot pounds and you're set and then working our way back to another one of the most obvious changes is the seat check her out you guys know all of the issues that I've had finding a good seat for this thing between the Corbin scratching it and their customer service being terrible and how hard the stock seat is. And honestly, my stock seat broke into the point where I didn't mind it, but lots of you guys do have an issue with it. And it's kind of crazy that I finally found the best seat out of a cheap, crappy eBay seat. And it's even crazier because, uh, I don't know, I guess I'll link it. In the, no, I actually, I won't link this one in the description. I'll just post the seller so that you can avoid them and buy it through somebody else. They actually tried to scam me. Uh, I don't like the white stitching and actually this Rebel logo used to be white also. And I reached out to them on eBay and I said, hey, I love the look of the seat, but I hate the white stitching. I hate the logo. Can you make me an all black seat with no logo? And they said, yeah, sure. Long story short, after months of back and forth and 
them telling me that they sent me, that they sent my seat to the wrong person and that they were gonna send me the right one and whatever. They just ended up refunding me my money or eBay gave me my money back, I don't know. But long story short, they tried to scam me and I scammed the scammer and got the seat for free. So that's awesome. Now I do plan on getting it redone still though, cause I'm not a super big fan of the white stitching still. It doesn't look as bad as I thought it would, but my goal was to never have white stitching. So I still wanna get it recovered and have it redone either all black or maybe like a dark brown or something. And as far as comfort, man, this thing is really comfortable. Like I said, I put in a decent amount of seat time yesterday and it was way more comfortable than the stock seat. And it has a lot more surface area for your butt. I don't got a big booty by any means, but it has a lot more surface area. So you feel a lot more supported and it's really nice because it kind of like comes at almost a right angle here. So on acceleration, it really locks you in. It does slant forward a little bit. So I found that at first on braking, I would slide forward a little bit, but then you get kind of used to it. I haven't tested out the passenger portion with Nina yet, but we'll see how that goes. As you can see, it does kind of come down to a pretty thin point right here. So I don't know how comfy it'll be for her, but again, I'm sure anything will be better than the stock seat for her. So yeah, it looks really good. It's super comfortable. And once I get it recovered, I'll be very pleased with it. I also even back here added a thumb screw. So you can literally just undo this by hand and then take that off. So you can still pop the seat off super easily in case you need to get to the underseat storage, get to the charger or anything like that. Now, even with all those positives, there's obviously negatives. You can tell here that it's kind of smushed like a, you know, like a pug looking out a car window, smushing its nose up against it, smashes up against the tank a little bit so the fit isn't super great there. Did I mention how hot it is? Uh, the camera just overheated once again. I think the last thing I was saying was about the fit. And the last thing I have to say about that, as you can see, there's definitely a gap between the frame and the seat there. And even with the stock seat, water can tend to get into the under seat tray if you're like spraying it too directly, washing it. But with this, you can definitely see under there. And I noticed because I just washed the bike like an hour ago and I could see all the rags underneath the seat through the opening. And you can see that this little uh, rubber pad doesn't even touch the frame until you sit on it. So fitment isn't the best, but for how good it looks and how comfy it is, I can live with it. Oh, also this thing soaks up water like nobody's business. I literally gave it a quick wash, a quick spray down, and uh, it soaked my butt. I tried to even avoid the seat when I was spraying, but it got soaked and the entire ride home, my pants were just soaking the water in. So probably don't get this if you plan on riding in the rain ever. Bruh. Okay, now can we get through the final thing, which is these dope new saddlebags with another camera meltdown. I have faith. Hopefully you guys have faith, but uh, yeah. Last thing is these saddlebags and they look so damn good. These are the SW Motec Legend Gear saddlebags. I've never personally been a big fan of the looks of saddlebags, but once I rode the 1100T at Daytona Bike Week, I realized the functionality of them is unmatched. You can't beat having a lot of storage on a bike and it just makes it so much more functional. So I started this search for saddlebags and as soon as I saw these, it was a no brainer. They are so sexy. They look so much better than any other saddlebag and the other features of them are incredible as well. If you guys remember, I I used to run the thrash and supply essential bags, just like the small throwover bags. And those worked all right. Like for everyday stuff, they were fine. But when Nina and I went on a trip, they just did not cut it. The thrash and supply bags, I think were only seven liters per side. So we really didn't have a whole lot of storage. Like even doing a weekend, come on bug, even doing a weekend trip, we had to kind of plan and be like, all right, you know what? We'll just buy body wash when we get there. Or we'll buy whatever there because we don't have room to pack it. And it was a big pain in the ass because unless we wanted to take everything out of the the bag and carry it by hand into the hotel, we had to take the passenger seat off to undo the Velcro and pull the throwover bags off of the bike to bring it in. But that could not be further from the truth with these because not only are they considerably bigger, each of these is 14 and a half liters. So each bag is more than twice the size of the thrash and supply, but also they're super insanely easy to take off. You have this little tab here that you turn to the left, then you close it and it pops right up and you can just take it like a little suitcase. It has a carry handle and everything. So not only does it have a ton of storage, but we essentially have, each of us have our own little suitcase for trips. And not only that, but if you're traveling by yourself, you can pop the tab on the second one and take it off. And then I don't know if it was designed for this reason or not, but I realized that both of the handles are in the middle. So you can literally one hand it like you have one big suitcase and stroll right into the hotel or the campground with your fancy new luggage. So dope.
And when the saddlebags aren't on, you can see the bracket is barely noticeable because it's all black and just blends in with the bike. And install was super easy. I will say though, for how luxury these things look and feel, it's kind of whack that you have to install the lock yourself. This locking mechanism doesn't come installed. So you gotta like push it through and then put all the backing plates on and screw it down and everything. And I don't know, for the price and for how luxury these are supposed to look and feel, and they do, it's just kind of whack that you gotta put your own locking mechanism in. But install is super simple because all you gotta do is put the locking mechanism in, take this little locking part and just hang it on that loop right there, and then put the bracket on each side, which is just these two bolts that come with the kit. Typically, they do have a 45 millimeter spacer that comes out to kind of set it off from the bike. But since I have this uh, sissy bar here, you can see how far out it sits. And so the spacer is just way too big. It would have sat really far out from the bike and I would have had to get longer bolts. But then I realized I had these aluminum spacers here, which I used for the exhaust. Uh, I've shown this in another video showing that you need that spacer in order to run passenger foot pegs with an aftermarket exhaust. And they worked perfect between those spacers and the sissy bar. It's the exact length of what the spacers are that came with the saddlebags. So if I'm remembering correctly, these are three quarters inch long, three quarters inch wide, and the inner diameter is five sixteenths of an inch. And they worked perfect. You can even see they're the exact width of the mounting point of the uh, sissy bar. And then putting them back on is just as easy. They just drop right into the slot like that. Then you open it up, take the little handle there, and you stick it in its hole, turn it to the right, and wait for the and that's when you know it's locked, you close it, and then you get to one of the only downsides with these, which is the fact that you have to lock it with a key every single time. The issue is that you close it and now it just can flap and open up whenever it wants. And the only way to turn that to get it to lock is to use the key. When you turn the key, it turns that so that it locks into there. But I really wish that you just didn't need the key. You know, it's like locked really secure now and that's great, but I wish that there was a way to secure the bag from flapping open without using the key and then when you need to lock it there was like a separate part to lock it you know so it's super just inconvenient that you need a key every time to get into it otherwise it's flapping open and then let's talk about the last part of the saddlebags which i also really love which is all of the mole attachments on the back and the front of both of them and these allow you to attach different things to it and in my case i attached an extra gas can right back here which i feel like is a must if you're doing long distances and like i've already said i don't plan on doing any crazy long distances but when it's so cheap and easy to have that there i feel like you can't go wrong this bag was only like i think less than 15 bucks off amazon and i have a 40 ounce can in there which if i'm getting 50 miles per gallon which is what i usually get on a normal trip 50 to 55 then this being full of gas gets me an extra 15 to 16 miles which should be enough to get you to the next gas station so super helpful now for the gas can the biggest one that i found that would fit in there isn't actually a gas can it's actually a water bottle that i had but since it's not a gas can i'm like dude all the other ones have warning labels. I need to have a warning label showing that this is gas. So that's when I made my own label. <laughs> and I think that does it. I think that covers everything that we added to the Rebel 1100 over the past few days to turn it into the Rebel 1100 version 2.0, aka the club style performance sport tour. I am so stoked with how it turned out and I hope you guys are too. Remember links to everything, whether it be the parts or the spacers or whatever, everything's gonna be down in the description. Stay tuned for a lot more content with this thing now that it's not only fixed, but also in its prime and just turned into exactly what I want out of it. Shout out to the Patreon members for making all of this possible. I could not be doing this without y'all. And if you want to support the channel through Patreon as well, check out patreon.com slash life of birch where you can pledge your monthly amount and you get behind the scenes access, early access and more. Patreon knew about this and I saw its final form a few days ago and you guys won't see it for a few days from now. It's the biggest and best way you can support the channel, but if you don't want to, that's fine. You can also support the channel by liking, commenting and subscribing and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Love you guys. Peace. Oh, so basic. Hope you play this, damn my pretty, nice song, eh? Yeah. I be Candace, all souls fake it, pay those ay, placements, ay, fuck shit. Ay. And I'm still waiting on the brighter days, been a minute, been rough many times more. And I'm kicking rocks to a sky of gray, praying hard, talk to me for I'm done for.